A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they may go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000, not counting women and children. Then Jesus said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, Jesus said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please remain standing as we invoke the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> reading today from St. Paul to the Corinthians, we read that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me, which is what we do each time that we gather for the holy sacrifice of the Mass, or as we call it, the Eucharist. We also, in the Gospel today, read about the feeding of the 5,000, not, not counting women and children, which means there were probably around 25,000 people. And Jesus, the Bible makes it a point, takes the five loaves and the two fish, blesses them. He said the blessing over, that, over them, the Gospel of Luke says, and then broke them and then gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. Blesses and breaks and then nourishes the disciples. Now, they encountered an impossible situation. 25,000 people, they don't know what to do. What are we going to do? Dismiss them so they can go and find bread, find provisions. Dismiss them to go to the surrounding villages. And Jesus says, no, what do we have here? We've got five loaves and two fish. We'll have them sit down, have the people recline. And now let's multiply. Let's feed the people. Let's give them nourishment. Because Jesus had the eyes of faith, whereas the disciples didn't as we so often are in like manner. We don't live our life with the eyes of faith. We li live with the eyes of lacking. We see what we lack. We don't see what we have. In like manner as the disciples did. They saw 25,000 people in impossible situation. Whereas Jesus saw 
five loaves and two fish. He saw what he had, they saw what they didn't have. Isn't that like that in your own life too? You see what you don't have. You see the war right now. Huh? In impossible situation in the Ukraine. We don't see that we have an all-powerful God and we also have a powerful army. Let's add that. Uh, uh, uh. We don't see what we have. We see what we don't have. You see that uh, your knees don't work, uh, but you don't see that you came today. Uh. You see the husband that you uh, would like to have. You don't see that you have a husband. Uh. And there's all these women who come here who wish that they had a husband. Uh. We see the country that we wish we had. We don't see that we have a a country. We, we, we love to complain. Huh? You know, for all of you who complain about the United States of America, you want to move to Russia? Huh? Hello? 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 Want to move to Russia? No. For all the complaining that we do, because we don't have the eyes of faith. And each mass is an opportunity for us to be reminded. That's why Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. And Paul says, as often as you do it, you are to do it to remember because you suffer from spiritual amnesia. You suffer from spiritual dementia. You have, uh, you know, that guy that hits you um, all the time. What's his name? Um, Alzheimer's, right? Uh, uh, right, you know, you suffer from spiritual Alzheimer's. That's why you have to be reminded as often as you do this, you are to remember. And what are you to remember? That God is in your life. That's why Mass is all about the presence of God. That God is with me. And if God is with me, everything's going to be just fine. Huh? It's all going to be just fine because God is with me. And God is all powerful. That force is in me. Now, Jesus said what we are called to remember every time we come to Mass that this bread is me, he says. Now, I want you to notice that Jesus doesn't make the claim of the bread being him until a series of events have taken place. He takes the bread through a process before he declares upon it a purpose. You just don't pop up into purpose, in other words. You just don't show up and you are in your purpose. God has to take us through a process before we are ready for a purpose. If you are going through the process, what, what is the process? It's called life. Hello, it's called life. It's the process. If you are going through the process because you're living, it's because you are not ready yet for the purpose. And your purpose is to get to heaven, to that uh, presence of God in your life, that all-abiding presence in his glory. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we're going through the process. You're not there yet. You are not a finished product. We are all works in progress. And in the midst of the process, you come to Divine Mercy Church, to be reminded that it's not all about belief, but it's all about trust. Because as Jesus said to St. Faustina, put underneath my picture, which I carry with me all the time, put underneath my picture that I want you to draw for everybody, Jesus, I trust in you. Not Jesus, I believe in you, because anybody can believe, but Jesus, I trust in you. If you, if you are stuck at the, at the point of belief, that's no better than the devil because the devil also believes in God. And what do you want for the fact that you believe in God? Where is that taking you? So what? You have to trust in God. The devil knows the, the creed better than any of us. But we have to trust in God in the midst of the process that the purpose is coming. That he's preparing you in the midst of the of the process, he's developing you. Hmm? Look at somebody right now and tell them it's a process. Tell them it's a process. It's a process. 
That was the wrong neighbor you looked at. Look at another neighbor. You tell him, it's a process. God is allowing everything in your life, all your problems, all the sicknesses, your new replacements that are coming. He's allowing it because it's a process. Huh? And let's look at the process. Because, you know, the bread, in order to become bread, it has to go through the oven. And what's in the oven? There's fire! Isn't there fire in the oven? Yep. Well, welcome to the fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's look at the process. Jesus took the bread from where it was to where he wanted it. The first thing that has to happen in the process is that Jesus has to take you. Jesus has to move you from where you have been to where he desires you to be. And if you don't want to move from where you are to where Jesus wants you to be, don't ask God to do anything with you. In other words, if you're here praying about something but you ain't willing to move for those prayers to come through, true, 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 true is that so hard to pronounce that in English, true, okay? Don't pray about it. You gotta be willing to cooperate. Don't ask God to do anything with you unless you're willing to be moved. If you are satisfied where you are, don't pray for God to do things for you. But if you are not satisfied, if you are saying here, no, I don't like the way my life is. Huh? I want something different in my life. Make me more mature, more holy. Make me what you want me to be. He has got to take you. And for that, you have to allow him to do it. And when Jesus takes the bread, the bread doesn't ask where the bread is going. When you are bread, you just trust God enough to take you to a better place because where God is taking you is way better than where you have been. See, you need to be willing for God to move you from one place to another. You need to be discerning enough to know when seasons in your life are done, not necessarily places. It's not, you know, talk, I'm not talking here about you know, moving you from one place to another. I'm talking about seasons in your life like uh, seasons in your relationship, for example. You know, one season is done, another one is coming. Like when you lose a loved one, that season is over in your life. Move on! Ain't nothing wrong with finding another partner in your life. It's done. Like Jesus said, you know, let the dead bury the dead. You keep on living. You keep on living. That season is done. Somebody, you know, dumped you or whatever. Move on. Better things are on the, on the horizon for you. You don't know why that was allowed to happen to you. The season in your job, that's done. Move on. Huh? In church, in family, sometimes the challenge is that the Lord wants to move you from some place that isn't bad. But God wants better for you. Hmm? From not bad to way better. You may not be in such a bad relationship, but if you're not in love with the person or they're not in love with you, move on! God wants something better for you. You may be in a job that is paying your bills, but you're not, you're not satisfied there. Why? You have one life to live and you're going to waste it there being unhappy? Because you're doing something you don't enjoy just for the paycheck? Come on. Not bad is not where God wants you. God wants better for you. God, actually, God wants best for you. Hmm? The job you may have may not be bad, but God wants a better job for you. Hmm? The relationship you are in is not bad, but God wants a better one for you, where somebody actually loves you. The health you have is not bad, but God wants to move you into better. For example, let me give you, I'm, I always try to bring things to, you know, earth. Cortisone shots are great. They're not bad. But knee replacements are way bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, okay. 
weighing 180 pounds is not bad, but weighing 150 pounds is way better. <laughs> so, go to the gym, start eating better, drink water. Beer is not water, everybody. <laughs> start eating healthier. You know, size 16 for a woman's dress isn't that bad. You actually, you look good in a size 16, a lot of you. But you know what? You look so much better in a size 8. <laughs> huh? Really? Take it from me. Huh? It takes courage. So he took the bread and he blessed it. And you know, the few times I want to vomit in my life, is when I turn the television on and see these evangelical preachers preaching the prosperity gospel, saying that God wants you to be rich. That's why they are rich, justifying their private jets and 50,000 square foot mansions, billion dollar networks, and not sharing any of it. Preying on poor, vulnerable people with tithing that you have to give 10% in order to be right with God. Uh, saying that God won't bless you unless you tithe saying that the evidence for your blessing is how much stuff you have, and if you don't give them the 10%, God won't bless you and won't give you miracles. We have a family here in church, Cecilia and Manuel. Their son, 16 years old, tried to commit suicide, put a bullet through his, uh, up here. He shot himself here and was at UMC dying. And one of their family members goes to an evangelical church here in town and the pastor of the church, because they tried to call a, a priest and couldn't get a hold of a priest, so their family member says, well, why don't you just get me a pastor? Why don't you just get the pastor from the church? Okay, and the pastor came and said, if you want a miracle for your child, you gotta give a good donation. Uh huh. Well, they prayed without giving a good donation. And he's just fine. And he is just fine. In fact, that story is so powerful. You should talk to her she, and, and talk to him. Cecilia and Manuel, they're here at 3.30 and at 5.30. They helped me a lot here in church. Uh, after that happened, I showed up in their life, and against all hope, the doctors were saying, you know, he was going to be brain dead, whatever. And I said, no, there's nothing impossible for God. And he's just fine. He came out of it. Hmm? And right here at Holy Mass, we see that we are blessed, not because of what we have in terms of stuff, but because of who we have that said we are blessed. In other words, I am blessed because Jesus said so. Jesus said I am blessed. And so I am. We have to get away from this church foolishness that wants to suggest that your blessings are tied to your money or your bank account or your clothes or your closet or the house you live in or the car you drive. This is so popular today in this country, actually all over. It's called the prosperity gospel. Mm -hmm. That you, in other words, you can be a millionaire and be miserable and depressed, but you can have one suit and five shirts and get up every day and declare like my grandmother does. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because I am blessed because he said so. That's the Greek word there. Blessing is a Greek word that means he said so. He spoke over it. Good speak, benedicere, you know, in Latin too. And he didn't just bless the bread. I'm trying to tell you that the bread is you, okay? He didn't just bless the bread, but what else did he do? Which is the theme of the readings tonight, or excuse me, today, okay? He broke it. He blessed it and he broke it. To break it, you have to hit it on something, and then stuff falls from it. 
breaking it means it will hurt. To be broken, you have to be shaken and knocked around. And notice when it is broken, some stuff falls from the bread, doesn't it? Let me take it right now. This for a show and tell, okay? Because there's nothing like a good illustration. So we take the bread, okay, at Mass, at each and every Mass, and what do we do with it? We, we repeat the words of Jesus. He blessed it. He broke it. And when I broke it, stuff's falling off. That's why we, we have to have the pattern, and I have to be very careful because of all these crumbs that are falling off. Stuff falls from it. Breaking it means it will hurt. And sometimes the Lord is breaking you because you have some stuff that needs to fall from you. Bad attitudes, nasty habits, nasty attitudes, addictions, wrong way of thinking, insecurities, your depression, your anxiety, being stuck to someone. I want you today at Holy Mass and at every Holy Mass to say, break me, Lord, until my bad habits fall off. Allow it to fall off. Break me till it hurts. You know, the surgeon to fix you needs to cut you and then puts you back together, doesn't he? So cut me, Lord. And so now for all of you with depression or anxiety, your kids on drugs with bad attitudes, your marriage is falling apart, you feel lonely and have nobody, you can't pay your bills, the war in the Ukraine is causing you sleepless nights. Even when all this breaking and cutting and hitting and being knocked around is happening in your life, you need to remember, that's why you come to Mass, that before he breaks it, before he breaks it, what does he do? He blesses it. You may be broken, but you are blessed. You get it? Why are you blessed? Because he said so. Not because of the stuff you have. Because he said so. And wh why do you need more evidence? What, what else do you need? in order to be blessed. Isn't, isn't Jesus blessing you, saying that you are blessed enough? Why do you want more? I am blessed. With cancer in my body, I am blessed. I don't have cancer, okay? I'm just saying that you may have cancer in your body and you're blessed because he said so. Unemployed, but I am blessed. Broke, but blessed. Can't pay your bills, blessed. Even when life is rough, I'm still blessed. Even when I am catching hell, I'm still blessed. I may have all these enemies around me. I am blessed. And I won't quit because I'm blessed. So break me, Lord, for before you broke me, you blessed me. Trouble on every side, but I am blessed. I'm falling apart, but I am blessed. And I won't quit because I know he will put me together that this is all just a process to take me to my purpose. Huh? So, I will not wake up every morning magnifying what is falling apart and not magnifying what is broken or being broken. I will not get up every morning talking about all that is wrong and broken in my life, but I will wake up every morning magnifying Jesus magnifying what he declared over me, that I am blessed, for this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad mm? that everything is going to be okay. You know, when you break the bread, you can really smell it. Sniff the bread. You can't get the aroma of the bread until you break it, until you cut into it. The real you, in other words, the aroma that is you, this, the real stuff that you are made of can't come out until you are broken. Huh? Until you go through that cancer, you don't get to shine and smell. You don't get to show the stuff you are made of until that divorce, that betrayal, that deception, 
until you go through having to change your job, until you go through losing your loved one. So, Father Adam, I have a question for you today. You're talking about me being blessed and all of that, when I'm so broken. Huh? How am I blessed and I'm still falling apart? Well, let's go back to the first part of what happens at every Mass. He took the bread. Where? I'm asking a question. In his hands. For a, where? In his hands. Thank you, Paul. In his hands. I'm blessed because I am in his hands. Cancer in my body, but I'm in his hands. Divorce, but I am in his hands. Enemies making things up about me, but I'm in his hands. Depressed and anxious and full of addictions, but I'm in his hands. Not able to pay my bills, but I'm in his hands. In other words, he's got the whole world in his hands. He took it, blessed it, and broke it, and said to them, This is my body. Don't call this bread. Call this my body. So that when you let him take you, bless you, and break you, he will transform you and give you a new meaning, meaning that you never had before. So that it doesn't matter what you used to be. When Jesus speaks over you, he will change what you were and who you were to what he wants you to be. His body. See, I wish I had about a hundred of you, which is about the number we have here. I wish I had about a hundred of you who could say with me today, I know what I used to be. And I know who I used to be and what I used to do and how I used to think. But since Jesus came into my heart and took me and blessed me and broke me, since Jesus came into my heart, there is a joy in my soul that has changed me and given me a new name and a new attitude and a new disposition that allows me to say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let me rejoice and be glad in it. He has given me a new name. I'm no longer the drug addict or the alcoholic or the slut or the fat one or the ugly one or the broke one or the poor one or the stupid one or the depressed one or whatever the world may have named you or the anxious one. No, I am his body. And now look at it. It's his body, but it's still bread. It still is what it used to be, but it has a new purpose. You see, I don't have time for all these holier-than-thou church people who say they are saved but act holier-than-thou that you can't talk to them they don't know how to joke or crack a smile they're so saved they try to look so deep if you don't say the Lord the word Lord every fifth word you're not spiritual you know clutching their rosaries and pointing fingers to how wrong everybody else is Jesus says I am looking for the few people who say, I'm still the same person I used to be, but with a new purpose. If I danced in clubs before, now I will dance for Jesus. If I was loud on the corner with insults, I will be loud now with blessings. I am the same I used to be, but with a new purpose. He's given me a new name, and I will be okay. Huh? I am his body. Jesus has turned you into his body. We come to receive here what we are charged to, re to be. We eat Jesus to be Jesus. We are his body. Blessed and broken with a new purpose. Hmm? Let us live that as he continues to transform us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let's. Yeah, yeah, we liked it. This was a lot of work, I'll tell you. It was like days of, to prepare it, but, uh, and it's all recorded uh, so you can share it, okay, on Facebook.
and uh, watch it over again. There's a lot of food for thought in this sermon that I've prepared for all of you on this, the feast of the solemnity of the Holy Body and Blood as we celebrate the gift of the Eucharist, the gift of the Last Supper that Jesus gave us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God.